Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Know Your Gear QA Live number 88. Uh, this one's a very exciting one. Make sure I have that muted. I knew, see, almost, almost didn't catch it this week. Uh, so there's already 146 guys on. And uh, I thought what I'm going to do this week, we're going to try some new things this week, answer some questions and talk about some cool subjects. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is something different, which is highlight a viewer of the week. And uh, I'm going to do that right now. Let me go. Let me go back to my screen. Here it is. So you can see as well. I thought this would be kind of cool. Um, maybe right there. Let's start the screen share. Uh, we're going to highlight the viewer of the week. And the viewer of the week is Anna. Anna is right here. And she has a Jazz Master and the Jazz Master shirt on. Uh, and what's cool about that is her, her mother, Diana, uh, sent this in. And what I liked about it was I had no idea that we made an orange shirt. <laughs> Uh, so plus it was a cool picture and I, I love to see all the jazz masters and the, and the ukuleles in the background, but it was funny. I was like, I, I, uh, I thought, um, I thought they made that shirt. <laughs> I was like, oh, they cool. They made a shirt. And, and then I looked and oh no, we made that shirt. We do orange. So I thought it was cool. I just thought it was a cool highlight. So it was cool to see a jazz master shirt. It was cool to see uh, a, a new viewer and it was also cool to see, uh, orange i thought that was kind of cool too rocking the orange i i can't rock the orange uh uh shirts it's just it's too i'm too white and just ble bleaches out the, the just horrible my, my wife says i shouldn't wear ever wear red or orange so there you go uh and i trust her <laughs> so uh travis says is that a know your gear fret rocker maybe uh so we'll segue into that so on the website there's a lot of announcements today but i want to get into questions as uh as well and uh the the what is on the website what we will talk about today is a new section called the tools uh there's a tools uh section on the website now and uh everyone was asking about what tools should you get or what tools should you use and um and I thought, okay, this is an easy thing to to discuss. And uh, so what I did, let me go here. Sorry, guys, I have multiple screens up. Sometimes I'm just jumping around. And so I thought I'll share with you real quick since we're waiting for people to get on while they're logging on. We'll talk about this stuff before we hit questions. So I'm pretty sure I'm screen, screen sharing right now. Oh, yes. So what is going on is on the website now, there's a section called the five categories of tool diagnostics, maintenance, adjustment, repair, building and construction. We have, uh, I added the diagnostic and maintenance. Next week will be adjustment and repair. Uh, these are the tools that I think you should have for these categories. I put little explanations why, of course, link some videos to them as well. And uh, you can also buy the tools. And when I say buy the tools, just keep in mind, I went online because I knew that was going to be a question asked uh, later, which is, you know, where do I get these tools? So what I did is I found the tools that I thought were the best tools, the cheapest I could find them and link them. Uh, you don't have to buy them from those links. Uh, uh, what happens is I, I get like, I don't know, like a, a buck or something. If you buy it there, that's not the point. In fact, some of the links, I don't get anything, but, uh, but I just wanted to make sure there was links. And of course, if I'm going to link it, it might as well connect any kind of affiliates I had. So if I had affiliates, I, I use them. So that was a new thing. Um, and that was something a lot of you asked for. Uh, and uh, like I said, there's so many announcements this week. This is going to be the, the heavy announcement week. And then bigger announcements maybe next week. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so we'll keep going. 418. So there's enough of us. Uh, you guys want me to hit questions or keep making announcements about what's going on? Let's see. Uh because I'm gonna keep the big announcement to the end, so you guys are gonna have to hang hang to the to the mid mid side of the show. I'll keep you engaged. Uh, another uh, cool announcement is uh, another uh, another thing on the website that's a feature is um, we have, as you guys know, we have the history of gear, uh, which is really cool, and uh, where each each week there's a highlighted article about the history of gear and what happens, uh, where where gear came from. Uh, and there's also gear to know, which is like a product spotlight. Um, we highlight cool, uh, companies that are, that are out there, but today we're very excited to make an announcement. This is a big deal for us. Let me go ahead and hit it and I will share it with you right now. Again, like I said, excuse me while I jump screens. I'm sure on the podcast, this is going to be boring. Like, what are they looking at? I'll have to describe it to you. Right here we go. So Gear Wars, Sawyer versus Blades. This is uh, really cool. We have uh, Mike and Matt who are writing uh, for the website now. And as you can tell from the icon, one is from America 
our United States and one is from the great, great Britain. And we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we kind of post them, put them against each other. So they're going to debate things now, uh, fun topics in a very loving, uh, heartfelt way. And they don't actually get to pick their topics. They, they actually, uh, uh, may have to take a side. They don't really agree with, but what's this week, it's uh, to amp wars two versus solid state. What's great is if you want to read the article, it's a great read. And, uh, it's, uh, and at the bottom, you can go to where it says, uh, name, email, put in who won. You can type in who you think won. And then next week on the website, we'll announce who won and I'll announce on the live show who won the argument uh, versus tube versus solid state. And then also you could also put in suggestions about uh, what are the things you'd like to be debated. Obviously, it's an all in good fun. So please keep in mind, this is a good fun debate uh, if you don't take it too seriously. And the idea that, you know, uh, <laughs> Don't don't start clubbing each other is what I'm trying to say. It, you know, uh, ELE, everybody love everybody. Any Will Ferrell fans out there? So, uh, so obviously trying to keep adding cool stuff to the website uh, to give you guys stuff. The other thing I want to point out, and just the last thing, and then we'll get into some questions uh, about the website that's important to me is the website, like a lot of websites, is formatted for phones, but our website is formatted really for phones and for uh, for tablets in the way that it's designed. Not only in if you if you go to knowyourgear.net on your phone real quick, the articles are written in such that you can read them. And let's say the time it takes to I don't know take care of your morning duties if you know what that means. I just said duty, and uh, <laughs> or if you're waiting for uh, uh, the dentist or at the airport. Uh, so basically, you can read quick little snippet articles and stuff. That's how it's it's designed. It's designed for five minute reads at the most and a little something fun. And, and uh, we take suggestions. You can go on there and put all kinds of suggestions. There's also a new kind of contact page with uh, outline some new cool, cool features. Again, adding a lot of features to the website every week. Uh, and uh, that's all self-funded by us and the patrons. Uh, we haven't invited any companies um, to, uh, to, uh, to participate in this yet. I don't know if we will or when we will, but we will disclose to you when that happens or if that happens. Okay, so let's look at some questions. What do you guys got going on? Uh, the first one is BC Rich 29 and 29. What is the cure for gas gear acquisition syndrome? What is the cure for it? There is no cure for it. <laughs> yeah, death. <laughs> no, uh, seriously. Um, you know what's sad is I think I always find buying crap uh, is what, you know, is kind of what that comes down to. What's the cure for buying stuff all the time? Uh, simple. You run out of money. That helps. Uh, definitely stops it uh, probably way pr prematurely more than you want to. And also, uh, probably more so than that, uh, you get fatigued. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just buy a couple things and you get it out of your system. I find the biggest cure for gas is, is not buying something I love. I, 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 in me personally, I've never bought a guitar that I love so much that just made me never want to buy a guitar again. I've actually had the opposite experience. I bought in such bad things that it just makes you not want to, it's like going out to eat. You know, if you have a great meal that makes you want to go out again, but if you get food poisoning, you're pretty much staying at home for a little while. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> Jim says poverty. I agree. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that, but so that's why there's window shopping. You know, we've all window shopped, uh, uh, you know, the uh, guitar players by nature shop way more than they purchase. That is a, a, a normal, uh, normal thing for sure. You know, and that's a good segue. I'm going to segue into something that happened to me and I want to talk about it because it's an interesting topic. So I was at a guitar center last night. I went to the Chapman uh, clinic. He was here in town. So I thought, hey, I want to go. And I enjoyed it uh, way more than I ever thought I would. I thought I would enjoy seeing Chapman talk. Um, but I didn't realize I liked his videos and I've met him once before and he's was really nice to me. He came up to me once at a Red Robin in California and said hi and, and, and said nice things to me. And um, what was interesting was I didn't realize what an eloquent speaker he was in the idea that he... Uh, he was just really interesting to listen to. You know what I mean? Not just in a, you know, on the videos where he's funny and stuff. I mean, it was just interesting to listen to. So I enjoyed the clinic very much. So I want to start there. Uh, and then I got to talk to him for like 15, 20 minutes and uh, it was very nice. Um, I stood in line and I got a picture with him because I, I figured if I'm there, I'm going to get the picture. Um, but what was, uh, what was interesting to me was the guitar centers are getting strange to me. Um, I was, when I was there, I, I saw a couple SGs and I was thinking about adding another SG to the collection. I don't know why, just like really like my SG. I kind of want another one. And uh, they they put them up 10 feet up above the ground. You can't even reach them. 
You got to get a ladder, an employee to get a ladder. But then they lock them. Have you seen guys? Have you seen this yet? And I want to talk about this because this is an interesting topic. I brought it up on the Instagram today and it was a, a little fueled debate <laughs> to say the least. I absolutely find this silly. I, I don't know why anyone needs to put a guitar to the point where you have to get a ladder to get to it. That's fine. You know, you have high ceilings. You put the expensive guitars up top. That way the customer has to ask to get the customer, the guitar down, but locking the guitar. I don't know if that's, I'm, 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 I am so naive that I just don't understand that customers are getting ladders while the employees are not looking and going up and getting the guitars and bringing them down is that's what's happening. But here's what happens with me. And, and this is why. Um, I was at a guitar center uh, a month ago and I had bought a guitar and I returned it. You guys may have seen the video. And when I returned it to the counter, uh, they said, would you like a refund? I said, well, let me spend some time. I'd rather not get a refund. I'd rather, I spent the money here. I'd like to spend the money. So, um, so I looked around the store for hours trying to find stuff, but everything I liked was up high and it wasn't locked. It was just up high. And in that process, I had to get employees to get stuff down. And that guitar center, what happened was they had this tent inside the store. And when I say tent, you know how they have uh, stores will have, um, you know, like a uh, in the front of the stores outside, they put tents up and they'll have like card tables and sell stuff. And it was one of those kind of tents. And what happened was they had this lesson display. They were obviously trying to promote lessons, but the tent stopped any of the employees from bringing the ladder from one side of the store to the other. So they were using this rickety aluminum ladder to get up on the, on, to get up on the guitar, to get the guitars down for me. And the employee almost like fell. Not only dramatic, like not almost fell, but let's just say, uh, she was a little concerned about it. I was a little concerned about it. Uh, so the interesting point is she got some guitars down from me. The other employee got some guitars down from me. The, they were trying to be nice and not bother me when I was playing the guitar. But the problem was when I was done with the guitar, I, I had nowhere to put it. So I had to go find an employee to get it hung back up. And uh, so what ended up happening was out of guilt, I bought an instrument. I bought $179 uh, that micro bass. Now I wanted it, uh, obviously, but I wanted it in the idea that I was, I was determined to buy something before I left to show patronage for all the work they had done. And I really sat there and I really thought this was one of the most um, horrible experiences. And the idea that this, I've actually, uh, these two guitar centers, and I'm not bagging on Guitar Center. I've said this earlier today on Instagram. I have friends that work at Guitar Center, good friends. And I like Guitar Center. And I like uh, I like the people that I know work at Guitar Center. And there's some good people that work at Guitar Center. Just because it's a company, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, it's a corporation. It means it's bad. It's just, you know, but I will tell you this. Um, I have never felt like I put somebody out so much as to get a guitar. I, and I, my, my joke today I made on Instagram was I feel like it's easier to buy a BMW than it was to buy a thousand dollar guitar at Guitar Center. So the question I have is, what do you guys feel about that? Do you, do you really think stores, you think it's gotten that bad? I mean, I understand, you know, maybe the neighborhoods are not great and there's theft. I'm not sure what is going on, but at some point, my joke was, you know, why even have the guitars out? You can go to a jewelry store and look at jewelry faster than it to get guitars. And if it's gotten that bad to where guitars have to be put 10 feet on this, uh, up and locked, I mean, how are we going to continue to buy guitars? And if you guys have tricks, like, you know, this is what I do. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, so like I said, I would love to have your uh, thoughts. And obviously when the, the video reposts, you can put comments in there uh, too. Uh, I would love to see that. So uh, that was my story on the Guitar Center. I'm done. And like I said, I'm not upset about anything. I was just trying to give them, you know what it is? I look at it this way. I was trying to give them money. And to me, anytime I'm trying to give somebody money and it's difficult, uh, that's a problem, <laughs> right? Because it should be the opposite. It should be uh, them trying to get me to, to leave the money in the store and take some product, not the other way around. I shouldn't be trying to give them money. So, uh, so we'll go, uh, to the next question is, uh, cut go C O D M W two freak N L. Cause you probably run out of letters, right? You couldn't even type any more letters. It says, Hey Phil, what's your take on the new Gibson CEO? I don't know. I don't know anything about him. Last week we talked about the fact that he came from Levi's jeans. Uh, I think, uh, I think Gibson's going to bring back the old Gibson jean jackets. I think that could be a possible, <laughs> you know, they, uh, 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 but other than that, uh, you know, I keep hearing good things. I read a bunch of stuff this week. I'm sure a lot of you did. Um, I think, uh, Here's, here's the reality for me. Gibson is a product that a lot of players want. They've been around for a long time. They're a staple brand, let's be honest there. And, um, and it, you know, I've heard 
people say this, I don't know if I agree with it, but I, the sentiment is, is, is good is that when it comes to Fender and Gibson, it's like, they got to try and put those businesses out of business. You know what I mean? There's businesses just, they want to, those businesses are so established, especially in our community, like us, like a tight community, like guitar players that, you know, it's like all they got to do is not screw it up and they stick around. And I, I don't know if that's that easy to say that, but we'll say a little bit of that. You know, right. Uh, Nick did a super chat. I saw a super chat earlier too. I'll, I promise I'll get to it. Uh, Nick says, uh, what is your favorite pickup combo for hard rock and metal? Uh, for my Ibanez RG Ash body, I'm looking for a smooth, not harsh tone. Uh, so the problem I have is, uh, in my RGs, uh, I have DiMarzio's in all of them, except for the orange one, which is right there. I have EVH Wolfgang pickups. I love it there. But the problem is my, uh, Ibanez's are Ash by are not Ash. They're, uh, they're basswood. And, uh, you know, that's the, uh, <laughs> you're, you're talking about ash and I'm talking about basswood. And some people think that, you know, there's a difference in wood tones and some people don't. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to say on the record, I'm going to drag this one out. Maybe I'll insert a commercial right now. And you guys will have to watch a commercial on the replay. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> okay. So where's my opinion on that? Um, I, I agree with their, the, the sentiment that everything affects the tone. That's what I agree with. That's not a cop out, by the way, because that means I think wood matters. Uh, that I basically think every. I said once, I said uh, the temperature in the bedroom and the humidity matters. I agree with that. Everything affects uh, something. Um, the uh, you know what though? I heard a great saying once that said the biggest effect to your tone is your ears, and the idea that if you spent all day walking through the met a city and loud jackhammers and cars and stuff that at the end of the night, your ears are kind of fatigued and they hear things differently than they would if they were, you know, woke up fresh in the morning and had eight hours of total quiet. I think that's a cool thing to say, but back to your pickup dilemma that I'm sidestepping on. Um, I like the EVH Wolfgang pickups for the metal stuff for Ibanez. I like those a lot. I like DiMaggio pickups. Uh, uh, let's see. What do I like for DiMaggio? Um, obviously the distortion and the bridge is great for rock and heavy metal. Uh, the, uh, PAF for the neck, that'd be good on the, uh, Seymour Duncan front. I'm a controversial guy. I like JB in the bridge and a, a jazz or 59 in the neck. Although I don't know if I'm a huge JB on Ash bodies fan, but I'm going to say, yeah. So that's what I like for that. Sorry to have boring answers for you, but those are the pickups I like. Uh, I think there's a reason why that they're, they're out there. You know, I think most people who don't like them just don't like them because they're pedestrian. You know what I mean? It's uh, the thing about being a pickup that's uh, uh, that everybody has. It just becomes a pickup that nobody wants. So, you know, so. Okay, what else do we got? You know what? In the meantime, let me do this. Uh, AFMDQ says, Hey, Phil, can you recommend a speaker cab for my Runt 20? Thanks. Yeah, I've tried a lot of speakers with my Runt 20. I really like the cream back, which is ironically what Freeman sticks in their cabinets. So, uh, ca a, ca a cabinet with a uh, cream back would be great. Um, I like that. And, but I am a vintage 30 fan of uh, through and through. I like vintage 30s a lot, but I like the cream back with the, um, I never think beat the vintage 30 versus the cream back on my Runt, but. Um, funny story. Uh, I just put a vintage 30 in my supersonic 22 combo. Uh, somebody mentioned it last week and I go, you know, I have a vintage 30 speaker. I should stick it in there. Um, I never thought, uh, you know, I tried some other speakers. I never thought about using my tried true. Uh, love it. I uh, love it, man. It was great. It was a good idea. And, um, uh, okay. Next question is Chuck Keen just says, keep up the good work. Then, then no question. All right, Chuck. Uh, thank you for sponsoring this uh, live show, Chuck, because uh, you're one of the patrons that take care of the, the the live show stuff. And and hopefully you'll get excited. Oh, you already know. So you already saw the announcement today. If you are a patron, uh, yeah, you should have seen. Most of the patrons saw the announcement today. Uh, okay. Um, Nick's question is, what is your favorite? Oh, we already did that one. So we got to talk to Shawnee. Shawnee is a Cubs fan. Hey, Shawnee, again, how are you, buddy? Says, hey, hey, Phil, have you ever tried a Gibson SG Classic? Uh, what are your thoughts on them? Uh, just put one on layaway from a local shop. Cheers from Chicago. You know, it's funny is uh, I know the difference between a classic Les Paul and a standard Les Paul. I would assume that the differences have to lend themselves to the SGs, right? Um, never really thought of it that way. Uh, I have a standard SG. I always looked at standard SGs. So, so here's what I can tell you. Without any experience, I, I can't tell you, uh, you know, what I think uh, comparatively, but what I can 
uh, kind of extrapolate from it is I would imagine since I think the classic and the standard, I like both standards and classics when I play them, the things that make them different, um, are not really like make or breaker for me. I I've owned both classic and standard Les Pauls. So I would imagine a classic, uh, SG to me is going to be a lot like, um, the standard, uh, SG. So for me, that's the same. And then, uh, Joseph just did a super chat. Thanks, Joseph. And, uh, so let's do a non super chat question. And, uh, all right. Here's a long one. I don't even know what it is. I want to give it a, sure, a shot. It's a uh, Cretan Bull says, Hey, Phil, I'm a brand new player and I have a made in Mexico jazz master. So do I. Uh, mine's right there. Uh, I can't see. I got the wrong screen. My jazz. That's my made in Mexico black jazz master right there. Love it. Uh, it's got, uh, it's got Rosewood fretboard. I don't, they don't do it anymore. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> okay. Back to the question. I have a made in Mexico jazz master that came with humbuckers. Uh, are there any Jazzmaster style pickups that fit in the humbucker profile other than P90s? Um, you know, I don't know, but what I will tell you, uh, Cream Bull, if you didn't see this, I talked about this once on a live show before. The Jazzmaster made in Mexico uh, model that I have, it, it, the pickups in it are not actual Jazzmaster pickups. They're built differently. They use a ceramic magnet and they are they sound a lot more like a P90 and less like the Jazzmaster pickup. So if you get a Jazzmaster made in the USA, or some of the made uh, and, and Squire Jazzmasters actually have. It's funny the jazz. Some of the Jazzmaster Squire guitars are actually set up and sound more like the Jazzmaster than the actual made in Mexico version that I have. Um, but I love the punchiness of the made in Mexico jazz master pickups, which are essentially the P nineties. So I'm kind of the wrong guy to ask because, um, uh, if I had a jazz master with humbuckers, I would probably leave a humbucker in the bridge and put some kind of P 90 in the neck, uh, some kind of humbucker shaped P 90 in the neck and, and, and get, and that would be my ideal situation for a jazz master. Uh, if I could do it to that one, I, without having to cut a new pick out and go through all that stuff, I'd probably do it. So, um, uh, there you go. Uh, but, uh, you guys out there, I know you guys have tried everything crazy. Uh, tell me if you guys have found a, a set of a humbucker style. So the question is humbucker shaped pickups that sound like jazz master pickups. Somebody out there knows what they are. So let me know what they are in the comments. Uh, and maybe I can research it. Uh, it's, you're the first one to ever asked me for that. Uh, it's, it's not only as a question, but as a for anything and repair. BK says, which Fender non-Fender Tele is the highest quality, best iteration of the Tele formula? Uh, which Fender non-Fender Tele? Uh, which Fender? I think it's because of the slasher saying Fender or non-Fender telly is the highest quality best iteration of the telly well you bk you didn't say a price right so I, I don't know uh i mean i i don't know uh what which fender this question i'm just going to keep repeating it until i think of something uh which fender telly is the highest quality best iteration of the telly formula hmm uh, you know, I like for Fender, I'll just tell you what I like for Fender. I really like the Baja Tele, something we've talked about in the past. That's a great, uh, Fender guitar. Um, I actually think most of the Fenders, uh, Tellys that are by Squire, the Squire, uh, uh, uh Tellys are fantastic. Uh, you just change out the pickups cause they, you know, they just have the, the, the wrong pickups. Unless you, I think the classic vibe, I think they put the right pickups in there. Right. Um, but, um, the non-Fender one is tough. Uh, for non-Fender ones, I haven't tried the Harley Benton one, so I can't speak on that. Um, I have tried Tajima. I think Tajima makes a Tele style one. I'm not sure. I know they make a Jazzmaster one. The Tajima stuff was really cool. I tried that, uh, and that was good. And then the other thing is, obviously, the GNL stuff is really cool, but a little different sound because their pickups are a little different. But I would say you'd be happy if you went with the GNL uh, tribute for a Tele, the highest Tele quality kind of iteration. Um, and, but again, I'm kind of keeping you in the lower price ones cause you didn't give me a price point. So I'm just kind of assuming, uh, so, but I like tellies. I, I just use fender tellies for telly sound. Um, there you go. There you go. Hose of technology says, since you mentioned P nineties, where do those rank to you? Not so many P90 guitars out there. Yeah. You know, uh, so, so funny enough, I played the, uh, the new Chapman semi hollow P90. Um, and, uh, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, that is the nicest chat. Oh, I played the Rebeer, uh, Rebeer Chapman last night too. Um, those were the nicest Chapman's I ever played and they were a thousand dollars made in Korea each. And, uh, 
but stainless steel frets and uh, and uh, roasted maple necks, uh, hip shot tuning keys. Uh, so you know, I mean, it was it had nothing to do with Chapman. It was like if you like Chapman, let me tell you, if you like Chapman guitars, uh, you know, just like if you like you know Schecter guitars or or Charvel or Fender or Gibson, if that's your brand, if you like Chapman, those are the best Chapmans I've ever played. Um, Without a doubt. So if you're a Chapman guy, that's a guitar to look at. If you're not into Chapman guitars, well, then they're good and you're, you know, they're good guitars. But if, you know, you kind of, everybody gets, stays loyal to certain brands. Uh, me, I really like that Rabir one. It was really, really, really sticking with me. But I think that Simi Hollow with P90s, uh, I just, I haven't stopped thinking about it since yesterday. Uh, and of course, I hear it ringing in my hear, ears. I won't, uh, I won't even embarrass myself by doing a fake British accent, but I hear Rob chapman in my head going uh i know a guy who can get you a deal on one and it just kind of is like it's like uh it's like the episode of the brady bunch was like mom i always said never play ball in the house uh, i hear chapman in my head i know a guy who can get you a deal on one <laughs> so uh yeah uh i really like that guitar and that's p90s uh and i was impressed but that's but in all fairness so you guys know uh that guitar was like that's the kitchen, kitchen sink guitar it's made in world manufacturing you know fa facility in korea but i mean it's low to everything uh and i've been looking for a good p90 guitar so and i'm partial to semi hollows too i love semi hollows so it's i don't know it's calling my name so maybe i'll just have to be a chapman fanboy a little bit that's okay uh, like I said, I, I, you know, what it is, I've been trying so many Chapman guitars over the years. If you guys notice, I, I've been trying to find the one that, that, that I bond to. And there've been some ones that I liked, but just nothing sticks out. That one stuck out for sure. And now I probably ruined it because maybe you guys are going to buy a couple and then there won't be any available for me. All right. Um, okay. So let's see. We got, Mike's got a, a, a question. He says, I'm restoring an old Moserite Ventures 2 guitar my dad gave me. Yeah, those are awesome. Uh, when I was a kid, early 80s, I just replaced the nut, but I am missing a tremolo bar. Any ideas where to get a replacement? I would, um, uh, so if I'm not mistaken, I just don't know what resource would be helpful to you, but I know Ed Roman, I believe, owns Moserite in the name, Ed Roman Guitars. Uh, I would imagine there would be a good source to start. Um, and uh, there's got to be sites devoted to Moserite. Moserite is obviously a very iconic thing that's had a very interesting past. Um, that would be a good company to do five things about, you know what I mean? Get involved with that. But, uh, but Mike, I would reach out to the Ed Roman store in, uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada. They, I, I was, unless something's changed, they, they own, the, they currently own the Mo's right name. Things could have changed. I don't know. Um, and my, my also guess is there might be aftermarket replacements for that, but, Sadly enough. And I, I'm, you know, for parts, I, you know, use eBay a lot. You know, it's a nice place to find those weird, strange parts like that. You always forget about eBay. Um, funny, I use eBay. I would say I buy parts the most off eBay, new and used. And it's funny, every time it's the last place I look, but it's always the place I find the part. So uh, Matt says, just to thank you, uh, the knowledge I've gained uh, from the videos, much appreciated. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you too. And then Joseph did a super chat as well. Thank you. Uh, let me, I pinned the rest of you guys super chats. I'm not forgetting you. Just give me a second. I want to, like I said, I kind of try to look for some cool questions that we can all can enjoy stuff. Uh, one, I just gotta, uh, I love doing this to you guys. You know what? I'm, I'm going to make a new policy on the live shows that you may hate. Uh, so either we'll unsubscribe now or you'll, you know, it's definitely subscribe longer. Uh, every time you guys ask me a question, if you should buy a guitar, the answer is just going to be yes for no reason. Paul Van Ty Tyrant says, should I buy a music man cutlass? Uh, and, uh, or a Fender Stratocaster, Paul, I think you should get both. You'll never be happy until you have one of each. I'm <laughs> just kidding, man. Uh, you didn't say what Fender Stratocaster. It's not a fair fight. So when I'm thinking music man cutlass, you're, I'm assuming you're talking about American one versus the American Stratocaster or the Sterling one versus the Mexican Stratocaster. Um, I'm a Fender guy. That's just a thing I, I'm, you know, but I, I have a cutlass in my craw as well. I want one. Um, I, I'm, I'm really jazzed about the cutlass because when I went to GNL, going to GNL and learning the history of Leo Fender and this this lineage that connected all together, that you start realizing that you know it's it's yeah, there's Music Man, there's Fender, and there's GNL, but there's really this 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 connection, which is it's just different different guitars that this one person just created over the years is really cool. So a cutlass is just a guitar that I just want to have. Um, 
price wise, I think there. Are, I think that I could tell you this. Uh, where I think of a Fender American Stratocaster as being the high end on the strats of the prices, I think the Cutlass, even though it's expensive, is is not as expensive comparatively because I think it's really in, co in uh, comparison to like Sir or Tom Anderson in quality. It's a you know Music Man uh, doesn't. Uh, in fact, that was last week's subject, right? Uh, somebody uh, asked me what I think is better quality Music Man or, or PRS. And I was like, I think they're almost equal, but I, I like Music Man better as a type of guitar. They're just more expensive. I'm, I'm a cutlass guy all the way. So that helps. Okay. Uh, Mel says, oh, this is a good time. M Mel says, most right guitars are heavy, literally. They can be, or they can be light. You know what I mean? They've, they've done the gamut. But yeah, the ones I picked up, a lot of them are heavy. I've picked up a couple that were light too. Light and heavy guitars are always, there's no certainty in that. That's one thing I've always, uh, I try to always remind everybody over and over again. You know, people are like, oh, you know, all Les Pals are heavy. Well, not all of them. Some can be light. You know, all, all ash body guitars are heavy and some can be light. You know, wood has a variance in weight that's pretty extreme. A guitar, the same identical guitars with the same body can be up to two, two and a half pounds different in weight. And it mostly has to do with moisture and sap. Um, and how, you know, because how dense the wood is because of those factors. So yeah, you know what I mean? But, um, that's my pet peeve, by the way, when I email people like on reverb and I'm like, how much does this guitar weigh? And they go, Oh, weighs what a strat weighs. I'll, I'll, they'll have a strat and I'll say, could you tell me how much it weighs? And they go, weighs what strat weighs. And I go, well, strats can be between six and a half and eight and a half pounds, the same guitar. That's two pounds difference. So that doesn't really tell me anything. So, um, which is why it's cool that some places weigh all the guitars. All right. Um, okay. Alex says, Hey, Phil, I love the channel. I have two questions for you. Okay. So I'll do one and then I'll come back. Maybe let's, let's, let's see what happens. It says, what causes neck vibration from an open D and G is it an issue with the truss rod. So that's a weird question to me because when you say vibration, I would, I'm thinking the strings move, the neck vibrates. That's good. But when you say vibration, do you mean like rattling? The neck is rattling. Um, so is it an issue with the truss rod? Okay, so also, what are your thoughts on Eggnator Tweaker 12 versus Blues Junior? Oh, that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good comparative. Okay, so, so then uh, back to the neck issue. I'm not really clear on the question, so it's a little tricky for me. What causes the guitar to vibrate from, from an open D and G string? I, I need more clarification. It's just too, it's too, you know, vague. You don't have to super chat it, if, but if you could re- type it i'll find it uh and uh we'll talk about that uh eggnator tweaker uh, 12 uh versus the blues junior um you know i like the eggnator tweaker 12 sounds better to me but the blues junior comes with reverb uh you know and that was just a big thing for me having reverb okay and so if you hold on a second alex i don't know if you're posting uh if you guys can help me alex Yes, like rattling. Thank you, Alex. Okay, so yeah, what causes it rattling? Um, yeah, sympathetic buzz. So uh, sympathetic frequencies. So yes, something in the, uh, the, you know, there's a thing you can do as a bass player. It's kind of fun. Bass players will kind of know this, what we're talking about. Uh, we call it, sometimes we, we say what a room is tuned to. In a, in a bass player, you can go in a room sometimes and you can mess around with hitting notes in the bass when the bass amp's loud and you'll hit a certain note and the whole room, you know, will just start shaking the, the ceiling. Everything just vibrates. Um, and in a music store, you can get all the acoustic guitars to ring. <laughs> uh, and sometimes it's an A and sometimes it's an E. Uh, yeah, so it's a frequency that the guitar is hitting. And then, of course, the truss rod's rattling. The fix with that would be first to make sure the truss rod's not entirely loose because it shouldn't rattle if it's tightened. There shouldn't be anything in a truss rod. Once it's got some a little tension on it, there shouldn't be anything rattling. So that would be my concern of what's rattling and if you have some tension. And uh, so that would clear it up right away. Uh, that's the first thing I would I would look at. Okay. Um, where are we at on time? We're good on time. I'm going to hold on, pin the questions. I got to make an announcement. I promised an announcement. We're about halfway through. Okay, let's see. Let's do the announcement. All right, here's the announcement, everybody. So I did a video uh, a couple months ago, I think, where I bought a Fender Telecaster Deluxe. You guys probably, some of you guys remember the video. And I bought it from Sweetwater, and um, I didn't love it. And uh, so what ended up happening with that was Sweetwater reached out to me and said, hey, uh, we saw the video and they were very 
sad. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. They were very, uh, they were, they were, you can tell they were pained that I didn't enjoy the guitar. Like it, it really stuck with them. Um, so what was great was they said, you know, if there's anything we can do, uh, let us know. And I said, okay. And then they asked me if you have any suggestions on how we can improve the 55 point inspection or how we can improve the setup process. We would love to hear back from you. And that was very nice of them. And, uh, so I responded to them and then, uh, in they decided that, uh, that they are going to change the 55 point inspection. They decided after, uh, talking with me and watching the video that to, uh, basically improve the process and also, and more importantly, disclose the 55 point inspection, something they didn't do before on their website. You can only see 20 of the highlights. So now if you go to Sweetwater website, you can see all 55 points in inspection or, uh, what I did for you guys. If you go to the knowyourgear.net, uh, web page, uh, our website, there is a PDF downloadable section where you can download my inspection sheets. You can download, uh, the toolbox sheets. You can download all kinds of sheets that I have, but more importantly, you can download the two page printable inspection checklist that not only tells you in order all 55 points of the, uh, uh, Sweetwater inspection, it literally will let you, uh, you know, you can check them off yourself and go through them. So it's the same thing they have on their website, but I, I put it in a little downloadable PDF instead of just having it printed and stuff. But that's not the important part of the story. The important part of the story said, well, they said, look, that's great. Um, thank you. And we're going to, we're going to improve our process. They said, we would like you to come out to Sweetwater and see the process now that it's been improved and maybe share it with everybody. And they would like to give you a, uh, they, we want to give you a guitar. And so I said, well, that's great. Except I don't think people really want to watch some YouTuber go to, to Indiana and get a free guitar. Um, maybe you do. And, uh, I, I hope I'm wrong. And in ways I'm hope I'm, right that you didn't want to see that because i told them no what i told them was i said i have a better idea i said i have this thing i do uh like what i did with gnl guitars where i don't want you to pay me to do anything i don't want you to compensate me i would like to be compensated with appreciation in other words for my my channel and what i do and the audience and what we do here and so here's what we're gonna do i am going to sweetwater india uh, indiana on the 13th of november that's in about a two weeks from now, a little less than two weeks, I will be there for two days to do some filming. And, uh, but more importantly, I'm announcing to you guys that know your gear live QA number 90. This is today's 88. So next week, next week's 89 and the following week's number 90 will be done on Wednesday, the 14th at 11 AM Indiana time. I think don't quote me. I think that's 9 AM Arizona time, 8 a.m. California time. So you guys will have to look at time zones. It's easy enough. It's 11 a.m. At 11 a.m. Indiana time, we'll have Know Your Gear number 90. It'll be me and Mitch Gallagher. And we're asking you guys for a favor. And here's the favor. We want you guys to join us that day. Ask questions like we normally do. Do what we do. But you are going to be given a budget. You guys can go and find a guitar. I won't tell you the details. Just you're going to pick a guitar out off Sweetwater. We are going to pick a winner to win that guitar. And then we're going to film it and get it, show you it's, you know, get set up and all the process done. And then you guys will win that guitar. And I said, that would be cool because two things. One, if you pick out the guitar live, there's no way for them to pre-sort the guitar to make the guitar come out great. In other words, you know, when it goes through their inspection, if the, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's like you're, we're making them accountable to the, to us, the, the customers, but more importantly, if I give the guitar away, so we're giving the guitar away, uh, the person who wins the guitar will be able to uh, critique, uh, what I say about the guitar. Cause once they're done with the process, I'm going to give you guys an honest review of that. And of course, then there'll be somebody out there like you guys that win that guitar and they'll be able to then say, yeah, yeah, I agree or disagree with what Phil said. So, you know, you know, I'm not just giving you lip service. But more importantly, on top of that, there's more stuff that's going to happen while we're there. Not only are we going to do some Sweetwater stuff, uh, like behind the scenes stuff. This is the first time they've ever let a YouTuber go through the uh, repair and in, uh, I guess, sections of the, of the facility and stuff. So we're going to be doing all that stuff. And and I'm really excited about this because um, it was it's a really big deal to have a company that size literally reach out and say, look, we just want to improve our process. Um, and what's great about that for me and not to I'm not try here to 
to tote my ho own horn in any way. I'm just going to say sometimes when you're a YouTuber and you're doing reviews, sometimes when you, you have a review that's not very pleasant to give, it's, uh, it's, it's scary. You know, as you guys have seen on this channel, I've said some stuff and it's gotten me in trouble. And so to see a company reach out and say, Hey, look, man, we knew that what they said to me was great. And then I'll get off this topic. They said, um, they said, we could tell you were really sad that the guitar did not work out for you. And they said, we wanted you to be happy when we watched the video and you weren't. And so they, they just want to make this, uh, they want to make a great experience. And I said, the best experience is obviously to, to share more information. Uh, I'm really excited, by the way, you guys should really check out the 55 point inspection thing. I was really, really shocked what it was and what it does and doesn't do. There's some cool things that I think that are enlightening about it now um, that were, um, you know, confusing for me as a customer before, you know what I mean? What were they looking at? And now you can see. So, uh, that's it. And there'll be some more announcements about the Sweetwater thing. I'm also going to be on Thursday. I think I'm going to be doing the live at lunch thing. I'll be performing for an hour while I'm there at Sweetwater. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, I'll be hanging out at Sweetwater. Uh, they asked me at four o'clock on Wednesday, if I want to go back to my hotel for a couple hours and then go to dinner. And I said, I'd like to just hang out in the store and check out gear. So I'm going to be hanging out in the store. So if you're in Indiana and you're by Sweetwater on uh, Wednesday, I'll be from four to six, two hours. I'm just going to be checking out gear. You're welcome to come in and hang out with me, check out gear. You know what I mean? So I'm excited about all this. There's more stuff to come. I, like I said, I can't allude. I can't tell you all the stuff, uh, but there's going to be uh, something even more shocking. Uh, that has to do with you guys <laughs> that um, I promise you this. And this is the last thing I promise you one crazy thing. That's what I'm promising. I'm promising. I've done some crazy things. I promise you this will be a, one of those things you'll be like, yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy that you did that. Uh, and they've been pretty cool about letting me do cool stuff. Uh, so there you go. There you go. All right. So I was jabbing my jaws. Uh, I missed some questions obviously. And some, let me, let me tag a couple real quick. Um, uh, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. I promise. We're going to go a little extra innings today. I can tell because of the questions. Um, the, uh, Joseph says, Phil, I'm putting together a parts caster. Should I buy a new aftermarket neck or look at used Fender Stratocaster neck? Thanks. You know, that's a good question. I really like, uh, Fender necks. They feel great to me and I like them, uh, buying them used. You know what I mean? Sometimes what I, you know, something to think about too is, you know, you got to also take into account, uh, the thing about necks that are kind of funny to me is the necks specifically about guitar necks that they're kind of like guitar speakers in the idea that sometimes you can buy a cabinet with a speaker used less than you can buy a speaker right? It's, it's a weird thing. Like a vintage 30 is like 130 bucks, but sometimes you'll find some guy on Craigslist selling you a $75 speaker cabinet, you know, with a speaker in it, this is a vintage 30 or something. I don't know. But, uh, so same thing, look at used guitars too. Cause you can cannibalize guitars, you know, think I like to look at guitar, guitars, especially like Fender style guitars, sometimes like cars, you know what I mean? Sometimes people buy old cars, dirt cheap just to get the parts because the parts are cheaper and uh so uh don't be afraid to think about that sometimes if you can find a smoking local deal on uh, a mexican made stratocaster for 2 250 uh you can sell the body and, and and with the pickups and stuff off for like 100 150 bucks i mean you can get into a neck for a strat if you work it right for 100 bucks don't don't forget those options are out there you know what I mean? Plus what's great is when you buy a parts, a, a guitar that, that is uh, assembled that you're going to take apart. One of the cool things that happens too is, uh, you can play it. So you'll know what condition the neck is before, you know, you go on. So, so just, just, just always broaden that horizon, Joseph. That's the only thing I'm saying is that there's other options besides just getting the neck straight up. And if, uh, if you find a great neck uh, by itself, do that too. But there's, it's a great world out there. This infinity of options. Uh, Shawnee's Cubs fans, uh, says the difference between SG standards and classic is the classic has dot inlays along with P nineties. Ah, oh, the classic is no longer made. Just to clarify, man, you already got me at the P nineties. That's why I was telling you about the Chapman guitar. I wanted a, uh, uh, SG with P nineties. In fact, when I bought that SG, I was looking for SGs with P nineties, but every time I saw one, somebody was asking insane money. The P nineties ones were always going for more than the, the standards with, uh, with pickups. So, okay. That makes sense that yeah. P 90s all the way. Uh, okay. And then BK wants us uh, to clarify. He said, uh, for, for, uh, for the best telly, uh, for, uh, it's, uh, the best tele tele iteration 
at the two thousand dollar and above range. Oh man, well you know that's that's you can buy anything. I mean the two thousand dollars, you know, new and used market. You're looking at uh, there's cool tellies from Crook that are awesome. Those are a little more pricey, but they're great. Um, you know, I think at two K, uh, I would look at the vintage. Uh, to me, it's the, the 52 telly reissue, right? The vintage. I don't know if they changed the name this year, but it's the butterscotch telly that Fender makes, uh, the vintage with lacquer body and lacquer neck. That's the, that nails it. I mean, that's, and that is what you want. You know what I mean? Why buy it? Why buy some crazy company's copy of the Fender telly at that price point when you can just get a real lacquer made Fender telly at that point. And, uh, that's a sick guitar. Okay. Neil just did a super chat for no reason. Thank you, Neil. New day. It's a new day. New day says, can you recommend a multi-power supply eight or 10 outputs for under a hundred euros? No, <laughs> I don't even know anyone built their own pedal board uh, case. Can't decide what to build one from. Uh, uh, well, if you're going to build a pedal board, I, wood is definitely the thing. I don't know about a pedal board case, um, but a uh, hundred euros. So what is that? American is like 130 bucks, 140 bucks, maybe. Uh, man, I just don't know. Uh, usually 810 power supplies, they're going to be about 200 bucks plus. So I just don't have a suggestion. Uh, so I just don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I like Voodoo Labs for power supplies. I use them really good. I have, uh, what else do I have? Uh, Big Joe makes a great one. But like I said, all the ones I suggest are like I mean, euros, at least 200 euros. Uh, Presley press says selling amps is such a pain. Yeah. Shipping them is too expensive. I know it's why my amps start piling up, uh, with local pickup. You have to deal with Craigslist creepos thoughts. Yeah. You're stuck, man. I'm stuck with you. Um, I have the same problem. That's why I have, uh, sometimes when you look at my amps collection, it's that's because I can't get them to move. Um, so, uh, what I've learned is for amps, uh, I just consign them at local stores. Now that's what I do. You know, they're worth it. They cut, they cut in 20%. Of, you know what? It's, it, and it takes longer. The thing you have to come to terms is you got to give them 20% at least. And then you got, it takes a while for them to sell it, but uh, it's the only way to go. I, I, I'm getting sick of it. I, I sell an amps, uh, online, you know, when you try to get rid of amp, especially tube amps, you know, everything can go wrong. You got to have the right box. And, um, but, but if you do online do reverb, because they insure this stuff, you know, and ship it through, ship it through reverb, through the button where you actually buy the shipping through reverb and insure it. And, uh, it's the only, it's the only way I will ever ship anything, uh, selling it is through them because they handle everything. If there's something goes wrong. Uh, John Guzman says, did you ever hear about the Stratocaster name Starcaster. Well, yeah, there was originally Starcasters back in the day. And then of course there's Starcasters that look like Stratocasters that were made for Costco. So if that's what you have, uh, Starcaster was a uh, Starcaster is, uh, when they started doing the big box stores, that being Fender, uh, selling to Costco and the Walmarts and what's the Walmart Costco called? It's like Sam's club, right? Um, they fender for whatever reason decided not to give them squire squire was available in the in the re, uh, music store retailers so they started starcaster so if you have a starcaster a real starcaster right fender doesn't look like a strat but if you have a strat that looks like a starcaster it's a squire it's probably made in the same factory it looks like a squire is a squire but it's called starcaster because it came in a box kit or it came from one of those big box retailers um it affects the resale value obviously because it doesn't have the the Squire brand because that's, that's a stronger brand than Starcaster, but is it the same thing as a, a Squire? Yeah, it's the same thing. So, um, I've heard people say, you know, oh, it's a lower version and stuff. Uh, I, it could be possible, but I've, you know, you know, can imagine uh, if you're a guitar tech, uh, I've set up a lot of Starcasters after Christmas back in the day when Costco would go through like piles of those. Um, and uh, I, there's nothing about them that's it to me was any significant difference from a Squire. So, Starcaster is a squire as far as I'm concerned. Justin Toome says Fender Brace Breaker 7 or 15. I, you know what? Love the 7 more. I like the sound of the 7. It sounds like a, the 7 is like the sound I wish Marshall would make. The 7 watt, it, but here's the problem. I had the 7 watt and it hummed and the hum drove me nuts. And then I went online and everyone was complaining about the hum. So that was the first issue. The second thing is the 15, although it sounds great and I like it a lot, I like the seven better sound, but the 15 had the reverb and that was kind of nice too. So 
you know. Uh, so if you can find a seven that doesn't hum, I would get that if you don't mind reverb. But keep in mind, having reverb is nice in the 15 combo. So uh, that's that's why I ended up not getting either one. I reviewed both of them uh, way back then. I bought one of each. I, I and uh, that's what it was. It was like this. Uh, it was it was just they were they were both great, but one didn't win the other over. So um i do regret not having the seven anymore i like it so much but like i said it did hum and it, it was just weird so hey has anyone else had the hum issue and does anyone know if they fixed that maybe sometimes when they've you know mine was like two years ago when i had mine maybe it's been fixed if you guys have one and it doesn't hum now or if you know if they fixed that stuff um let me let me know you know what i mean I'm curious. Uh, that's what's great about this stuff. When we do these QAs and all this stuff, please guys put comments at, especially afterwards. I know it stuck sucks after the live thing to go back and type this stuff in, but man, you can really learn a lot from, you know, uh, all, all the other players, you know, nothing beats practical experience. Nothing beats hands-on. So, uh, you know, if I know something that's great, but if you guys physically have it, you'll, you'll be way more informed than I can be just giving, you know, a theory or conjecture about it. Uh, Matthew King says, is there a better spec guitar for the money than a Schecter C1 SLS elite? Uh, no, not for the money, man. Sh uh, Schecter C1 L SLS is the slim neck elite. Uh, no, I, that's a fantastic guitar. Um, you know, here's a good example. Um, the, the guitars that I can think of that are as good or better than that guitar, they're all a lot more money. I, I, Schecter is definitely a great, especially used. Man, Schecter is a score used. Why Schecter is good deals used is, is crazy to me, but they are fantastic used uh, price guitars. Remember, I already told you, Matthew, by the way, if you ask me if you should get a guitar, I'm going to tell you to do it. So 61 Jr. says, hey, Phil, have you tried the 2019 Les Paul Jr.? Well, I just back ordered one with sweet water. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's cool. I liked it. Um, I don't know if it was the 2019. I played one at a guitar center. Um, and I, I just assumed it was 19, but I didn't look. Um, I would imagine it was. It was great. Uh, I really liked it. It's a cool guitar. It's cool that you back ordered one. It's awesome. Maybe when I'm there, it will come in and I can... I can mess with it uh let's see uh joe says would you suggest putting some like a blanket or towel okay here let me go joe wants to know if i would suggest putting a blanket or a towel in the sound hole of an acoustic to be able to play quiet in a college dorm room uh well yeah it wouldn't hurt the guitar you know the only thing here's what i here's this is exaggerating uh, what i'm going to tell you but sometimes for disclosure it's important to exaggerate the bracing inside the acoustic is glued in there. Please don't smack anything. Don't reach your fist in there and, you know, knock into the bracing loose. Other than that, no, it shouldn't uh, hurt it so much. But, um, um, you know, there's also a sound hole plug you can do, but I get it. You're saying college, man, you know, dorm room. Uh, no, there's not a not a big deal. Shove a shove a, a T-shirt in there. So, you know, rock stars have done that for years on all kinds of hollow body guitars, too, to stop them from ringing on the stage. There's a famous Gretsch player where the Gretsch comes, I think with a shirt or something you shove into it, if I think, or they did at least for a little while, um, because he used to do that. So yeah, you can do that. Just be careful getting in and out. You know, uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And then Tony says, Hey, Phil, just saw the Gary Rosington rig rundown. Ah, I started watching it and then I had to come do this with you guys. <laughs> and he's using old PVs. Ah, oh, don't tell me. So this is like, this is like a sports this is like the getting the score of the game. I I, I literally stopped when uh, him and John Bollinger were talking about his Les Pauls. And then he just showed the SG that he, that he uh, uh, and he was just showing the SG where the one that had the tremolo where it was missing the arm. And yeah, they hadn't got the amps yet. Uh, have you ever played the Wizard? Uh, I never heard of them. Yeah, I have played Wizard amps. They're fantastic. There's a couple companies uh, like uh, Splon and Wizard that make these fantastic Marshalls. Uh, you know, in my mind, for whatever it's worth, a wizard is like the Friedman before Friedman. You know what I mean? He was the guy, you know, making those cool marshals. Probably better than Friedman, but probably more expensive. I don't, I don't know. I hate saying better because, you know, it's such a silly thing to talk about as musicians. It's just different. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, wizard, that, yeah, wizard are, are nice amps. And I've played a couple over the years. And every time, same thing, you plug in and they're just, they were great, you know, kind of martial, just good good tone marshals there's there's always a uh, there's always a company out there that making a slightly better version of some big company's product and that's wizard what what they do 
Uh, let's see what else do we got. Hold on a second. I got to grab some non-super chats. And since we're getting close to the hour, I want to check to make sure that we... Cool. We are ta we talked about all the highlighted stuff. That's the important part. <laughs> let's see. Um, okay. Um, all right. I know I'm kind of not talking, but I'm got to read for a second because you guys, all of a sudden the questions are long. Okay. So Raymond says, hello, Phil from El Paso, Texas. Could you visit the EVH 5150 amp factory or give us some insight? I just thought 50 watt head and loving it. Yeah. The factory is in Ensenada, Mexico. Now I've been to Ensenada, Mexico, but not specifically to look at the 5150 amps that were made there. Uh, they, um, they're made uh, by Fender in the Fender, uh, Ensenada made in you know, Mexico factory. So, um, specifically that would be, you know, I'd like to go back to Ensenada, Mexico and, and do a, a video, uh, with Fender. The, what I'm hoping over time is, is the channel hopefully gains clout. You know, it's a lot easier to, you know, ask, uh, you know, companies to, to visit their facilities and do stuff. But, um, you know, I, that's my dream. So, you know, my dream is like to be Mike, the, I would love to be, it's going to sound corny. I would love to be the Mike Rowe. If you guys knew Mike Rowe, uh, not micro, like small micro, like row your boat. Uh, the guy who does dirty jobs. I would love to be, I would love to do something like that for gear guitar. You know what I mean? Go check out all kinds of crazy places and do stuff. And, um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, I would love to check out the 5150s and how they're put together and stuff, uh, in Mexico, but, um, what else do we got? Somebody says, make sure you give thumbs up. How many thumbs up do we have? We have 141 thumbs up. I don't know. Is that a lot? <laughs> we have one thumbs down. In fairness, we got the thumbs down, I think, six hours before the <laughs> live stream came on. So that's okay. You can thumbs down. I I've said this before. Uh, some people believe me. Some people don't. It doesn't matter. Uh, I I it's true. Thumbs ups and thumbs downs are the same <laughs> when it comes to YouTube as, as a whole. Uh, people argue with me about that, but... Uh, uh, what I mean by that is YouTube's just tracking interaction for the most part. So if you don't, ah, see, I got two thumbs down. See, eh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> what if I told you I got a dollar for every thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, but actually, they don't do anything. Um, okay, so uh, Indrid Cold says, I want a Hagstrom Fontaman. Uh, I think I'm saying it right. Fontaman. Uh, if not, Hooked on Phonics did not work work out for me uh but i am worried about the quality being made in china any issues with hagstrom that you know of uh, i've i've played many hagstroms uh and um for the most part they are good quality guitars so you know uh so nothing i can say i don't have any personal stories of bad hagstroms for me my only bad hagstrom stories are there uh they are they don't sell very well so resale value on them is pretty horrific so if you're looking at a used one, you'll get a good price. If you look at a new one, I would look at used ones too, to keep in mind, because, you know, one of the great things when you're buying guitars is, you know, uh, you know, is that the resale value is good. So when the resale value is bad, that doesn't mean don't buy it. This means look at those used ones. Cause then you can score some smoking deals. Uh, black Corvo says, Hey, black Corvo. What's up, buddy says, Phil, have you heard of Tajima guitars? Yeah. I was talking about it earlier. It's a Brazilian brand. Uh, their stuff is decent. Uh, got a TW 61 jazz master costume. sounds, uh, copy sounds sweet. Yeah. Uh, did a setup for, uh, a friend, uh, and a customer and a friend, uh, on his Tajima and his was a Tajima Brazilian one. Uh, I was very impressed with it. Uh, very, uh, I think his was like a $900 thousand dollars new made in Brazil. Um, and uh no legit and then i set up uh his uh son's uh tajima um uh that was the import one i think that was a jazz master style for 225 you guys look this up man tajima guitars uh i can tell you right now i set up the 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 um the uh i don't know if that's what you have the t i don't know them by name like that but um but the tajima the one that was 225 bucks it was as good as any harley benton i played and it had a cool vibe because it's like its own little thing and it's a brazilian company but yeah so you guys know it's tajima uh and i, I think i'm saying it right 
because uh, I watched a video. <laughs> I watched a video to see if I could say it right. Uh, and uh, no, cool stuff. Well, I'll put a link to their website. Um, maybe maybe I can reach out to them, see if they'll let me uh, review one. I would really like to. But I, like I said, I had them. I set up two of them. So I've set up a Brazilian one and a Chinese one. And what I can tell you was the uh, Shaman Blues wants to know how I'm spelling that. Easy enough, Shaman. It's T-A-G, like tag, and then I-M-A. So it's like tag Ima but it's Tajima. Uh, it sounds Japanese to me. Like I think Tajima, I think Japanese. I am so pleased to understand I'm not cultured. So uh, I, when I was supposed to be learning my manners and how to uh, speak properly, I was just messing around with gear. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, so somebody put it on here, Mario put Tajima. Yeah, it's Tajima. Check it out, guys. It's a, one of those hidden gem guitars, I would say, um, uh, for sure. Uh, if you guys live local, uh, in Arizona, there is a used Br uh, Brazilian made Tajima, which I believe is my friend's. Uh, he's, he traded into the guitar center in Phoenix. So you can check one out. Uh, and I set the guitar up so you can see how it plays too. You can send me an email and be like, it plays great. <laughs> you can say something else. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's see. What else? What else you guys got? This is cool. Um, we're in extra innings right now. Um, um, okay, so a couple, I'm sorry, I'm reading and thinking and talking out loud at the same time. Yeah, somebody, I'm just reading this stuff about Tajima. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, see, uh, Danish, 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 and man, Danshan Queen says, I have a Tajima acoustic. I didn't know they made acoustics. I didn't see that. So that's cool. It's pretty decent. Yeah, like I said, I was impressed with the stuff um, for sure. And it, like I said, it had a cool different vibe to it. Very, it, it looks, so you guys know, it has that cool headstock. That's the trendy headstock right now that you see with like Fano and Friedman and all that stuff. And it was, it, like I said, it was a, it's a cool looking guitar. And and like I said, I can tell you from what I, my experience with the two I played uh, and set up, they were fine. And I could actually say it's nice when you when I do setups, you know, because I have a sheet I go through and stuff. I mean, I go through those guitars, so I didn't see any issues. Now on the Tajima import, oh, good point. I'm doing off memory. Uh, and the Tajima guitar, I did replace the output jack. Uh, cause the one that came with it was really cheap and I just wanted to switch it out. So I switched it out. But other than that, I didn't find any issues that were worth, uh, uh any concern. Cause they had me when they, they brought them in to me for setup. Uh, they brought them to me. He, they asked me to go through them. So, uh, Neil says, Hey, from Australia. Hey buddy. Um, uh, he says, I have purchased the custom 36 or the, wait, I have purchased the 36 custom 36 or 72 coupe amps. I love them, but wondering if you have any experience with them regards Neil. Yeah, I had the 36 coupe. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, uh, uh, James Brown, the guy who uh, designed or helped design and build the 5150 amps for Eddie Van Halen and PV, uh, when he left PV, he went to work for Custom, Custom with a K. You guys remember the Naga, Naga Hyde Tuck and Roll? And he designed the amp called the 36 coupe, and then later the 72 coupe, which is a 212 combo. So 72 watts at 212s, 36 watts at 112. Amazing amps. You can score them. You know, you guys, there's only 800 of you here. There's not enough of you to drive the market crazy. Uh, you can go online, look at them right now. Custom 36 Coupe. I think you probably score one for five, 600 bucks used. Made in the USA with uh, spring reverb. Fantastic looking amp, I think. It's got a little Naga Hyde tuck and roll, a little piece. Uh, came in blue, red, or silver. Sounds great. Uh, I, as good as any Fender I've ever played, sound-wise, clean amps, good distortion sound a little better than most Fenders, of course. And um, uh, the 72, I'm sure, probably is bigger and bolder. Uh, and actually, you can find the 72 for less than you can find the 36 uh, coupe when you find the 72. Uh, but uh, good amps. Obviously, I'm a James Brown, uh, James Brown uh, fan, uh, fan. He's now doing amp tweaker, right? Isn't that what he's up to now? And uh, I'm, a, you know, I had a geek out moaning, um, geek out. I had a geek out moment with James Brown, uh, James Brown once I, um, I met him at the name show and I got a little tongue tied as I'm doing now because I just, you know, he's a cool guy and I really respect him and his amps and stuff and what he did, but that's a cool amp. It's a sleeper amp for sure. Um, 
Uh, on a warning, though, on a side note, I can't remember exactly. Uh, and Matt, uh, by the way, thanks, Matt. He said, yep, it was AmpTweaker. Uh, I can't tell you for sure, but just double check it if you're looking at them online. I thought towards the end of the custom role uh, in uh, custom 36s uh, and maybe after he left or maybe right before he left, I think they moved him to China. So there might be the same amps made in China. So it's easy to figure out. Just at, look at the pictures. And if it says made in the USA on the back, it's the USA. Otherwise, I think there is a, the identical amps made in China or they're currently still in production, maybe made in China now. I'm not sure. But just be aware of that. But the doesn't seem to hurt the value. The American ones seem the same the same price. Um, uh, Thomas says, Hey, love the show. It was great meeting you and Rob last night. Uh, thanks for uh, tagging my guitar. Hey, no problem, Thomas. It was great meeting you. Uh, good stories. Uh, and like I said, it was, it was cool to have uh, talk about, um, machines of love and grace and, and my old bass teacher and stuff. And, um, it was cool meeting you and thank you for letting me assign your guitar. Um, and, uh, uh yours, you know, that was fun. It was a, that was a fun experience for me to talk to everybody and, and, uh, and uh, it was cool to see your guitar. Did you get my message? I was talking about uh, telling you that I, I I didn't get to tell you last night that I use a JB in the neck too on a lot of my guitars. My uh, swirl guitar, I don't know. I'm not looking at my screen now. Sorry, so I can't see myself. Swirl guitar right there is a, a JB in the neck on that one as well. And I know yours has the JB Junior, but same, same thing. I like putting sometimes the JB in the neck for a little kick, a little kick in the solo tone. All right, let's finish up some questions and we'll start our weekends. Um, so HK says in 19, in a, in a 1979 Strat, how heavy is the cast one piece tremolo unit compared to the modern replacement replacement? Should I swap it? You know, I don't know. Uh, I, I just don't know what the difference, but should you swap it? Well, no, you shouldn't ever. I mean, if you swap it, you've got to keep the original because, you know, obviously you want to keep as many original parts as possible, especially on the 1979 because, uh, you know, the stuff becomes valuable. Um, my my thought process is I wouldn't replace it. I wouldn't change it out. Um, if you're going to change it out, you're just going to put a, a brass block on there. That's what I would do. Um, but then keep the original. But I don't mess with that stuff. I'm not a block guy. So you guys know, I don't change out blocks on bridges. I have some friends and they swear by it. And I trust them because they are very smart uh, people that I'm friends with that when it comes to guitar stuff. And and um, so, I mean, I, I can't doubt their logic, but to me, it's just never translated into anything I could, you know, easily go, oh yeah, yeah, that's way, way different. You know what I mean? And I hear it sometimes, but I, and I've changed enough blocks. It's crazy how many blocks I've changed for customers. And every time, you know, like, do you hear the difference? And I'm like, yeah, it's improved, but I don't know if it's worth my 20 or 30 bucks sometimes. So, um, and then Thomas says, uh, love the show. Great meeting. Oh yeah, we already did that, Thomas. I'm sorry. I did them out of order. Uh, okay. So it's Joshua. Joshua said opinion on Sierra tone Marshall clones. Don't know anything about them. Uh, sounds familiar, but I just not familiar with them. It's a, uh, it's the worst two dollar answer you're ever gonna get i don't know <laughs> so um okay let's uh let's grab one more or two more uh and i'll and we'll guys we'll start our weekends um uh jeff says hey any guesses on the price of the 2019 jimmy page dragon telly do you think it will be a winner uh yeah i think it's going to be a winner because it's an iconic guitar in the idea that you know jimmy page is such a les paul guy but you know if you watch my five things you don't know about the telly you know that he was actually using a telly for a lot of that stuff um and the, but but what's great about uh is that it's a it's really this to me page and his telly is just this iconic thing uh, and it's cool to see him with not a Les Paul. Um, I think it's going to be expensive. I mean, you know, I don't know what expensive means, but I, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, but I'm excited about it. Okay. And what can we go out on a good one? Uh, here's a quick, I'll do some quick ones real quick. Uh, M top metal says thoughts on synergy amps. Um, I haven't tried them. They were going to have me, uh, review some of the amps and then they just never did it. So I don't know. 
uh, you know, I was on, I was there, they were going to do it and then they didn't do it. So I didn't get to check them out. I think what we talked about on a live show once, remember I said, Oh, I'm going to get review synergy and then uh, nothing happened. So I don't know. Um, uh, but so yeah, I never put my hands on them. Couldn't tell you much about them. Um, my guess is they're designed by Bruce, uh, egg nader. Um, and cause he, you know, they're probably based on the egg nader modules. Uh, they, I know they inter inter interchange with the egg nader modules. And of course I'm a Bruce egg nader fan, uh, like James Brown. He's another uh, amp builder that I really, really respect and like. So I, I would imagine I'm going to like them if I tried them because I like kind of like where they're got that guy. It's not even about amp builders to me. It's about their ears. You know what I mean? Just like I said this before, guys who set up guitars, it's not about their skill set sometimes. It's about how their way they set up guitar fits your style. You know what I mean? How they can interpret the way you play. I, I think amp builders is sometimes it's more about their ears than their actual knowledge. You know, the knowledge to build an amp is great. But I, I mean, unfortunately, I, I met uh, uh, too many really smart amp builders that make horrible amps. Um, you know what I mean? They're like, ah, you know what I mean? They're, it's just like chefs. Sometimes you meet a guy and he goes to chef school and he makes you a meal and it's horrible. And you're like, ah, it just doesn't connect. He's, he's got the skills. He just doesn't have that little artistic touch. So, um, I like the, I like Bruce and I like, uh, uh, James, I think they have that artistic touch, just like Mike Soldano and stuff. I mean, there's just so many great amp builders out there that just have not only the skills to build the amps, but this ear that just knows where to stop tweaking. You know what I mean? Stop messing with stuff. So. Okay. Uh, anything else before we go? You guys want to give some thumb ups uh, before we, we go? You can do that. Um, uh, like I said, we'll talk next week about the Sweetwater thing. Um, and then just be aware because I'm giving you guys the heads up that that's happening. That is definitely happening, by the way. My flights are booked. There. The hotel is booked. Everything's done. Uh, so that's good. I'm excited about that. Uh, hopefully, you guys will win some stuff. I think Sweetwater also talked about giving you guys some discount product codes and stuff like that just to reach out to the community. Like I said, remind you one more time two things. One, that all the stuff is uh, on the website. You can check out. You can get the uh, PDF downloads. You can see what tools I'm using right now that I recommend. You can see the Gear Wars debate and give me your input on which one you thought wins for next week. I thought that was fun too. You don't have to do that right now. You can do that when you're, you know, like I said, next time you got five minutes in the, in, in the, in the bathroom with your phone. <laughs> I guess that's when people read stuff, right? Um, I read it. I'm sorry. That's in my head just because I read a thing that said, 90% of the people watch our re use their phone now, uh, watch videos on mute in the bathroom. And I thought that was a hilarious thing to, to read. Uh, and then because of the end of the show, I got to do a quick shout out to the, to the, to the people that make it happen, which are the, the patrons. And that's Bradulous, Jeff Howes, Zachary Rowe, Michael Newman, Bruce and the One Blood Wee Man, Henry Gunson, John Jex, Michael Shy, Justin May, David Madison, Andrew Good. Anthony Desposito, Billy Robertson, Bob Crosley, Bob Pickwode, Brian Stewart, Carlos Patillo, Chuck Keen, Chris from New Mexico. He's new. That's cool. New Mexico. I was just in New Mexico. Uh, Chris Glaze, Craig Parker, Dennis Prescott, uh, Daniel Psychic, A Dylan87, Greg Peterson, Jason Spacek, um, James Biles, Joe Watson, Jonathan Pickerton, Joseph, Joseph McCarthy, Kermit Jackson, Larry uh, Colkin, I'm going to say Colkin. I hope I got that right. He's new as well. Thank you, Larry. Lawrence Petros, uh, Lee Hawkins, Lonnie Hoke, uh, Michael Lidner, Paul Ostrich, uh, Ostrich, Louis and Alvaro, uh, Alvaro, sorry guys, uh, Ricky Robinson, Robert Books, Robert Hodges, Scott Tom Tompkins, Space Jazz, Tim, just Tim, because now we got three Tims. Tim, who's just Tim, Tim Camacho, Tim uh, Farnsworth, Todd Flowers and my favorite new one, Zesty Basil Pizza. Uh, I've been just excited to say Zesty Basil Pizza for no reason. Uh, and uh, literally, literally, so I, since I got the moment here, uh, uh, maybe like an hour before the episode, there's no way to update the, the thing. Uh, somebody just jumped on. Uh, and so give me one second if I can. I don't think it's going to let me, not going to let me do it, guys. Um, we have a new, new, a new person, but unfortunately the, it won't let me pull it up. Nope. It won't let me pull it up. So I can't pull it up. So I'll mention you next week. I'm so sorry. Somebody came in new and there was just no way to update it in the system and the system's not letting me see it. Okay. On that note, 
I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I had a blast. I'm excited. Obviously, like I said, just a reminder again, Live 90 will be at Sweetwater. Thank you, Lee, for the tip jar. I appreciate that. That's in euros, too. That's that's the real money right there. Uh, stronger than the, the dollar right now. And uh, as always, thank you, Brian Stewart, by the way. I'm going to mention you next week because I wanted to do a cool pitch. Uh, close up what you did. And I want to talk about the pics you sent me. So uh, just Brian, will do that next week. Like I said, a lot of cool stuff next week, more announcements next week. Like I said, we got to have some big announcements all through November. Uh, and on that note, I'm going to let you guys go enjoy your weekend. And until next time, uh, know your gear.